Hello YouTube. So I'm wearing glasses because the lights are a bit heavy for my eyes because <laughs> I get headaches. But I have a new lighting setup, which is great. Uh, but it's just too much for my eyes. It's not to be rude or because I'm trying to look extra cool, even though it does look kind of cool. Anyway, you already know what time it is. <laughs> it's acronym unboxing time. So if you watched my latest video, you know that I have been naughty again um, during the last acronym drop. So without further ado, I will just open this box because that's what we're doing. Um, it's a bigger box this time, I guess because I ordered two things. Anyway, I've, I've never had this size box actually. Usually just have the flat one. Feels extra special. It's like it's big. Like you spend a lot, so you get a lot or something. I'm just trying to comfort myself. There it goes. A letter. Wow. A letter for me. Let's see what it says. Dear Aga. I really hope you enjoy your purchase while it lasts before you realize all the financial problems you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> Thanks guys. So consider. Didn't have to. Alright, um, jokes aside. In here is the S27 AD bag and sheet. Full pack. Bam. And the J28. GT. In black. I got the black one. People ask me if I. Why didn't I get the white one? Well, because I already have a very awesome white jacket. And the whole reason that I wanted to get this was because I missed having a black shell. So I got this one. Uh, because it's. Uh, it's classic. So I'm gonna keep it a little bit suspenseful. I'm gonna get the S27 out first. Mm. Smells like Polar Tech. Ooh, wow. Ooh, it's nice. Ooh, it's so soft. It's so soft. All right, there we have it. S27. Man, I love it already. I mean, I've seen the pics, but it looks really good. This is exactly what I want. I'm so glad there is a new, there was a new AD release because um, I really felt for a while that I missed out on the LA six B DS, uh, LA six B AD, and the J eighty nine AD. I also really like the. The Polar Tech Power Stretch parts. It's very soft. Oh, this is gonna be so soft. I love this. I can also see that the parts where the sling is attached usually are like on the jackets and on the other shirts and stuff I have, like this, uh, like smaller and thinner. Uh, this looks a lot thicker, so that feels a lot sturdier. That's nice. Okay, so the pocket, let's look inside the pocket. What is there? Cool, so, it's, I, I, it, so it is exactly as I had hoped, imagined and hoped that inside the kind of mezzanine pocket here, or drop pocket, however you want to call it, is a smaller phone pocket. It's an acronym, phone pocket with a cool closing mechanism. Very simple, but it seems it looks as if it's, uh, this looks strong enough to keep your phone from falling out if you bend over, I guess, I hope. But if you use a bit more force, you can just pull it out. So that's nice, a enforced phone pocket. Uh, I thought it would be 
power stretch, but as I I'm feeling it now, it looks like to be shoulder dry skin. This is shoulder dry skin. Quite sure of that. Was that on the sheet? So the sheet says fabric technology, Polartec Alpha Direct, and Polartec Power Stretch. So it is not mentioned on the spec sheet that there is dry skin in this garment, but I mean, I, I can tell this is definitely dry skin. Doesn't really matter, but I mean, it's just a, a detail. All right, uh, I'm gonna put this on. All right, so the S27 uh, AD, I can say right now, this is just like instant love. <laughs> like I just put it on and it's immediately amazing. I just love it. It's super soft. I mean, I have more soft Akron pieces now. I, I don't know if this, I've said this before in another video, but uh, like in the beginning, like when you start getting attracted to acronym, your main focus is like the jackets, right? The jackets and the pants and, and the, the sneakers, because that's, because that's the look, right? That's the fit. That's what people take pictures of. It's what tech wear is. It's against the rain and blah, blah, blah. So you usually see tech wear fits consisting of a jacket, pants and shoes. So. So base layers and mid layers are not necessarily so much part of the image, right? So I started out having quite a few jackets and then started getting more into the base layers and mid layers. And now I actually have a lot more like t-shirts and I have a few wool garments now. I have the C1 AM, I have the S18 AK, I have the S23 AK and I love them very much because they're super cozy and because they are temperature regulating and that's something that I really love. Well, something that I've not really experienced before in before I got into tech work because I used to have just like clothes when for when it's warm and clothes for when it's cold and if you wear clothes <laughs> for when it's cold when it's warm you get super hot and and vice versa. So but now I have a few garments that are kind of in the middle and can be worn when it's not super cold or not super hot. And that has been a, like a really big eye opener to me because these garments are very insulating, but at the same time, very airy and breathable because of the, the way it's knit or the like, because of the construction. And this again is one of these pieces and I feel already it's, it's super warm. This is really, actually really warm. But as I move, I already feel, I mean, it's pretty cold in this room right now because it's cold. It's a hard thing to describe. I feel warm, but at the same time, I don't feel like I'm gonna overheat because when I move, I can feel the air flow through the garment. Well, I hope you know what I mean because it, if I hear myself, it sounds super vague, but <laughs> I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, so it's super cozy. It's really incredibly soft. I've already had some experience with AD before because I have had the, I still have a pullover from Ant Wander, which is also very comfortable. Somehow, I don't know if I'm just telling myself that somehow this feels softer, even though I just kind of compare the two and it seems that it's the same AD, like you have AD in different uh, gauges. I don't know exactly what this is. I don't know if it, that it doesn't really say on the spec sheet. So I don't know what AD thickness this is exactly. No, it doesn't say on here either. I can't see what, how thick it is. I mean, this is still a really great pullover too, but this has like a pocket like this on the front and that's just a tad too gorpy for me. I've had a few gorp like pieces uh, like that. And I had the XA Pro 3D. Um, beams, uh, Salomon shoes, which are really great to wear, but just look wise. I mean, I think a Gorpy look is cool, but it's, it's just not. Anyway, I digress. This is super soft for one, very warm, but not too warm again. I really like the fact that it has panels of power stretch to kind of reinforce it in certain areas, which the End Wonder uh, shirt did not have does not have because AD is kind of structureless because it's such a thin, light and mesh-like fabric. 
And that's the thing that I did have with the End Wander shirt that sometimes it felt a bit, well, not flimsy, but can't really explain it. It's, it's like you're, you're wearing a net. You're basically wearing a warm net. So it really helps to feel more like a significant garment. The fact that it has the Polartic Power Stretch here underneath the sleeves uh, going all the way down. So I think that will also definitely help with this abrasion that happens when you walk or whatever, when you sit, because I think power stretch is a lot more abrasion resistant than uh, AD. It also is stretchy, I mean, hence the name power stretch, which AD isn't really. It seems to stretch because it's like a net, right? So it's, well, power stretch does, which helps with when you want to roll up the sleeves, right? It stretches this way and I can already feel that this, and you can see that this garment is quite fitted, which was to be expected since it's called the S27 and the S27 PR was like super profile fit. It feels really good for me. Also something that I've really felt with acronym is that not always, but most of the time, like most of the pieces I've gotten in size M just really feel like they are tailored to me. Like somehow my body type or like the ratio of my limbs <laughs> is just exactly right for, because I mean, look at this, this looks, it's, it's, it fits perfect for me. And that's, uh, I feel really lucky about that because I do know that a lot of people um, find it hard to size for acronym and it's an ongoing discussion always to size up or size down. So I guess if you're shorter than me, but you have like broad shoulders or maybe a bigger belly or I don't know, short legs, then it's it's kind of hard to find the right size. Or if you are very tall and skinny, it will also probably be harder to find pieces that work for you. Anyway, so I can show you why the power stretch makes it nice for the rolling up the sleeves because like the cuff, the cuff is quite fitted as you can see. So if the power stretch was, had not been there, it would probably be quite hard for me to roll up the sleeve like this, or it would be too tight. And I mean, it's still tight, but it feels comfortable because I can feel the bottom part stretching when I flex my arm. And then the neck part is also reinforced with a Poltrick stretch. This time, I think not necessarily for stretch, but just as a reinforcement and also abrasion against the like the back of your uh, jacket. So the neck is really nice, really fits, fits my neck. I have quite a long neck, so it's, it's very pleasant for me to have. It gets cold quickly, but at the same time, I also have kind of a sensitive neck. So I actually don't really like uh, turtlenecks because turtlenecks are often quite tight and then for me it like feels like I'm being choked a little bit and this neck as you can see is fits around my neck but it, it's not tight see there's still some room here for my Adam's apple and for me to like breathe so that's nice then it can be opened Which is asymmetrical and also very cool uh, in my opinion. I also feel there are reinforced parts in here. I'm wearing it now so I can't really see it but it looks like there's reinforcement with kind of a webbing like material here which is great because again the, the AD material is quite um, unstructured so it can really benefit from some other structural additions to the garment. So I can show you the different looks of the collar.
So then the moment we've all been waiting for, well, I've been waiting for it anyway. So I hope you have been too. The J28 GT, the absolute classic grail piece. Generation 1.4. I never really understand what, what that means. 1.4, 2. Point this. I guess the the first number changes if there's like a really big update to the jacket, like J1A 2.0 and 2.2. Uh, but I guess the fit block is probably the same as the first ever J28. Only this is the fourth iteration within that fit block. I guess. If you have different ideas about this, please do let me know. A um, total of 11 pockets. It's a lot of pockets. Oh, the sound of Gore-Tex, yeah. Gore-Tex. So, um, yeah, let's first... So there are three parts. So the FD hat first. This is the new hat. It's a bit higher than uh, it looked on the pictures. So at first glance, I hope you can still hear me talking with all this Gore-Tex sound through it. Uh, if you do, I'll try to when I talk, not to move too much. Um, so this is what the hat looks like on its own. And the drawstring. I like how crispy it still it is. The new. It does look like this is a new type of Gore-Tex Pro, uh, as in compared to the J1A 2.2 I had, because it looks. I mean, I have the blue glasses on, but to me, this looks quite black. And there was a time that the Gore-Tex Pro Acrim used was. Uh, quite blue looking, uh, like the J1A, like J1A was, but this is quite black looking. I think the black J1B was already this, uh, this new black black Gore-Tex, which I think is really nice because, you know, if I buy a black jacket, I, that, that is a thing that semi annoyed me for a while with the J1A 2.2 that, well, it, it just wasn't really black, you know, it was kind of, especially when wearing together with Akron trousers, for instance, the P30 in the, the black shoulder dry skin or the black encapsulated nylon is like really black. So if you wear that together, then the jacket just looks kind of blue. As were the ACG, a lot of the Nike Lab ACG things I've had like the 2018 trench and but also the ACG cargos the black cargos were also kind of blue and even the cargos I have now the 2016 cargos are also quite blue or navy so to speak but this looks quite black even if I hold it against some black cotton so I really like that. Mm. There's nothing on the inside, no logos like on the uh, FC3 or anything. Doesn't really matter because I don't really care about the logo on the inside. Um, as I already expected, there is no extra drawstring in the hat, like on the hat of the J1E. No cowboy time with this hat, but if I fold back part inwards, you should be able to just like wear it as a regular hat, which I think is quite nice. I mean, I do think it looks different than the, I mean, I can't see myself that well, but I do think it looks different than the uh, FC3 maybe. It's better. I put up these t-shirts for the for the sound because this uh, 
wall tends to reflect the sound a bit too much. You can't really see the hat if I put him up there. So what do you think? Does it look different than the FC3 or do you think it's like exactly the same? It does feel different. It's definitely a different fabric because the FC3 was kind of a ripstop type fabric. And this is, this feels thicker to me and more sturdy because that was one of the critiques I had of the FC3 that it just felt a bit flimsy, especially for a hat. I just put it on and I, the first thing I thought was, wow, this is gonna like blow off my head with a little gust of wind. And I don't really have a feeling with this because this feels a lot sturdier, even though they are both Gore-Tex Pro. Gore-Tex Pro most breathable. So I guess there are different Gore-Tex Pro most breathable fabrics right now. The whole Gore-Tex thing is a bit confusing, to be honest. I really wish that if there was like a name for a specific Gore-Tex fabric, that would just be for that fabric and not like for different, like Gore-Tex Infinium is also like a term that can be applied to different kinds of Gore-Tex fabrics. I think it's super confusing for a nerd like me. I just like to have a specific name, please. Just call it Gore-Tex Pro 1, 2, 3, I don't know, you know, just make it specific. So I know what we have on. Just throwing water over myself. <laughs> Luckily my pants are water resistant. Okay, so that is the hat. Not a bad hat, Harry, at all. And then there are two loose parts. Obviously, the apron. Also, same crunchy Gore-Tex Pro. Really feels sturdy and waterproof. No flaws. And the construction. Hmm. This is interesting. The bottom is unfinished, as in raw. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, as in that means that this part, okay, so it's, this is the zip, so I guess it's gonna hang like this, but the bottom has an unfinished raw hem. Uh, which means that this is going to fray, most definitely. Which I know is going to bring down the value of the garment. Logically, of course, because why would you want to pay premium for something that is damaged? But yeah, that's how it is. Um, can't really do it. Well, can do something about that, but I don't think I will. This is just how it is. I guess we'll just have to keep it and not sell it anymore. Hopefully I will. But it's a good thing to keep in mind that by wear, this is really going to wear. And then we have the jacket itself. So, let's take a look at it. So one thing we know for sure that it has a new collar. Let's see if I understand this collar. All right, so there's this button. This is not an escape zipper for the front. It's just goes down here. Okay, okay. So this is like an extra piece to conceal the zipper on the front. And then within the main zipper is an escape zipper. Pull the jacket open. So there's no button at the top to close it there. Well, there's this button now, I guess. So the, so the button in the collar is now 
the button the button you can use to close the top uh, which in for instance in the J1A is uh, down here uh, there's still a button in the middle luckily that's good okay so there's a small mezzanine pocket in here okay ah as I hope it does have a small hole here because obviously rain and water can get in here so it does need to go somewhere and also this one this pocket so the, so the small one has like a hole here and the large one probably also has one here yeah. velcro closings So the right pocket doesn't have a mezzanine pocket here. And then on the right side, there's this large zip that opens to, as I already expected, two pockets, one behind here and one like hand pocket. That also goes to the back, as with most acronym pockets. And then one on the left too. Containing the logo tape and a Gore-Tex label. Uh, I'm gonna put this on.
Alright, so in conclusion, the S27 AD, amazing shirt, totally love how it fits, how it looks, how it feels, um, how warm it is, and breathable at the same time. Definitely keeping this. Uh, also very glad I was on time because it uh, this sold out very quickly. I think I will be wearing this a lot this winter. But of course, as with everything in life, there are also downsides. The Alpha Direct itself is very great, but it's also very, very fragile. That is really something you should be aware of and, and think about when buying something made of this. If you are a rough person or you have a lot of zippers everywhere, or if you have kids or if you, I don't know, you know, things can get caught on this very easily because as I said, it's like a net, so it's full of holes. Anything can get caught on this and it will just, uh, it's very easy to get pulls. Then again, the construction is so like hairy that you, if you get a pull from something, you probably won't really see it. So that's the other side. But yeah, it's a fragile fabric. It will also uh, peel very quickly. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not in any way abrasion resistant. Other things are the pocket is very cool. The design, I like it. How much I'm gonna use that, I don't know yet. I've already felt like, even though the, the phone pocket is reinforced, if I put my phone in, it's quite heavy. It, it pulls a bit down. You can really feel it hanging off your chest and kind of dangles against your belly which is not necessarily super comfortable so if i'm going to use that a lot i don't know yet uh, we'll see it's a bit of the same thing as with my c1 am that also has two very convenient pockets but if you put stuff in there that's too heavy it's just not comfortable it'll just dangle around but we'll see what's more is the i really like the construction of the back this like x bracing of the panels is i think very cool looking and i think really adds to your freedom of move movement and not feeling like sometimes you have garments in which you can really feel the you can really feel where the panels are stitched that is definitely not the case with this shirt it's like a, a raglan sleeve kind of thing so it, that makes it very comfortable and yeah that's great another great thing i've mentioned before is but that's just something that i really love about this are the power stretch panels i really think that adds a lot to the durability of the shirt i'm someone who leans on my elbows a lot so i you, you, at, at some point you know elbows are, are places that wear very quickly in fact that there's now this power stretch layer uh this power stretch panel underneath the arm really helps with that sling is cool this thicker webbing in the neck is cool also like the part in the neck that is power stretch one other downside is the zipper the zipper is a bit flimsy well flimsy is maybe not the right word it's not the same but it kind of reminds me of the zipper that is in the back of dresses that I'm like zipping up my girlfriend's dress and then I'm thinking how can this zipper ever hold this dress like it's just not it's just too small and this also is I guess that's because it's like semi I understand it's small to make it like semi invisible but it's just it's kind of annoying I think it's a bit of an annoying zipper the AD gets to tends to get caught in it when zipping up so um, I've had a bit of trouble with it already i mean i've had it for a few days i've worn it like twice and i have to admit that something already kind of broke the zipper cut a piece of the ad and that's why a piece of the zipper is now a, a bit loose so i'm gonna have to get it fixed which of course is super annoying because i just got the shirt and i want to wear it but i mean you know that's just how things go i will probably just get it repaired by acronym themselves which i have had really great experience with i know a lot of people like to complain about the acronym customer service but i've personally only had great experience with them i've had a few things repaired actually my j1e is in repairs right now because one of the small loops on the back for the jacket sling got loose too i just emailed them they said you can send it and then we'll repair it for free so you know i personally think their service is great but yeah that's um that's going to get repaired but it's 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 a great shirt i love it and, uh, <laughs> i can't wait to get it back and, and wear it a lot 
then we have the J28. All right, so in the first few days, I have to admit I had quite a bit of doubt uh, about the jacket. Not aesthetic wise, because I think it looks amazing. Uh, I really love that. Always love the earlier versions too. And this version again, just looks super cool. And all the added things uh, I also love, like the apron, the hat, uh, I, I love the hat. Even when it came out of the box and when I looked at the, the footage of it, it kind of looked kind of dumb, as I already mentioned early in the video, but I'll, I'll show you in a sec how it looks now uh, after it has been out of the box for a while. But my doubts were about a few things. First, the collar, uh, something that a lot of people were already skeptical about before the jack even released. It's a new collar. I do like the fact that it closes in the front to cover the zipper. I think that's a very clean look. The problem I have with it is that when it's all zipped and buttoned up, it leaves a small hole uh, just like in the throat, like beneath this piece, because the escape zip doesn't go all the way to the top. I mean, I understand it's so that it's still available to escape with while the top part is closed, but it just leaves a hole here, which doesn't look amazing, I have to say, just like design-wise, it, it looks a bit weird. Also because these two, these two zippers are very close to each other. So sometimes it is a bit of a hassle to zip up. I mean, after fiddling with it a bit, I've kind of learned how to do it, like what's the most convenient way to zip, and that is to zip the top part first and then zip the main zip behind it. That's the way it goes the fastest. Because if you zip the, the main zipper first and after that try to do the, the top one, then you'll have this thing here and then it will be very zip difficult to zip it up without getting the pull tab between the zipper and it just... To be honest, that's why I sped up that piece of the edit. Um, because it took so long for me to, like, that was like the first time I used the zipper. I couldn't really figure out how to do it without taking a year. So I was a bit hesitant about that at first, but after a while now I kind of learned how to do it. I can do it pretty quick and it's, it's okay. Um, still don't love the fact that there is, a, there is an opening in there, but I've worn it outside now. I've been on the bike with it and I mean, if it's cold, I'm gonna wear an insulator under this anyway. So I was afraid that the wind would get in and that it would be cold, but it, it doesn't. The, the, the top part is so tight that it doesn't really, because wind needs somewhere to go, right? So it can only go in if it can go out somewhere else. And the, the top part is so tight that that doesn't happen. That was also a, a thing that I was hesitant about, the fact that the top collar is quite tight. For instance, if I have a mid layer with a collar and then my J65, which has quite a, a thick collar, then it gets a bit tight. But I guess that's just how the J65 is. Oh, but I remember now that was also because I still had the sling inside. The sling inside in the neck also caused it to be extra tight, but I put the sling outside now, so. I don't know what's happening with my voice. All right, so let's wrap this up before my voice my voice just stops. Yeah, so the zipper is a thing. You either like it or you don't. At first I didn't. I got used to it very quickly. And as I said, I don't love it, but I'm not annoyed by it either. I love all the other things enough to accept that. One thing that I kind of miss is the fact that I can't open the zipper from the bottom, which is something that I really love on the J1. And a lot of acronym and ACG jackets have that option to zip from the bottom. Like the J1 has a separate zipper that opens, like the main zipper is also an escape zip. So I mean, an escape zip can't open from the bottom, but because the J1 has a separate zipper running alongside, you can open that one. Uh, because I like to put my hands in my deep pockets and causes a jacket to scrunch up if the bottom is closed. So you can't really do that 
a solution <laughs> I have found for this is to open the interops zipper a bit because that also gives extra room for your hands when you put your hands in your pockets. So that is a possibility and that works fine. It's not really a big thing, but it would have been nice. Well, I mean, I understand it doesn't suit this design, but I just like uh, zippers being able to open in the, at the bottom. Then first, I also had to get used a bit to the smaller pockets, um, but I kind of really like them now because they I can compartmentalize my stuff a bit better, like my phone and my keys and my AirPods and my wallet. So yeah, I, I really do like these uh, the way these pockets are placed and the size of them. I don't know how convenient this pocket is that is behind this one because if you have something in here, you can't really put something with volume behind it because it will be too tight. But I guess that this mezzanine pocket in here is just for flat things and the pocket behind this also. So like your, I don't know, passports, papers, whatever. Uh, that's fine, but not for like thick things. So the side pockets are just standard side pockets like most acronym jackets have. But then something that I also really like about this and why I think that this version is more superior than an older version of this, even though I don't think I will use it a lot, is the fact that the gravity pockets are zipperless. Because that is also a thing that really used to annoy me about my J1s, because I used to get caught on the zipper like all the time. So the new zipperless gravity pockets with the top entry with kind of a elastic uh, is really great. And just looks really clean. I mean, you, you, it's, it's almost invisible. You can't even see, especially with the black one. You can't even see that there's a pocket there, but you could use it. I could still like put a public transport card in there or something. I'm comparing it a lot to the J1A 2.2 because that's my, my point of reference. Uh, but a thing on the J1A 2.2 that also was kind of lame were the uh, sleeve hitch tabs because that jacket was so fitted that you, you couldn't actually roll up your sleeves uh, comfortably. So these tabs were just kind of useless because it was just the, the the sleeve was just way too tight to roll it up. But because this cut is much uh, more roomy, you can actually roll up the sleeves and this becomes functional. So now it's actually kind of cool. I think I will probably use that in like uh, when it gets warmer, because it's also a feature that I really like about my J68 windstopper. Uh, when it gets warmer, just rolling up the sleeves because I lose a lot of heat on my arms. So that is great now. That is an, like a new functional feature for me now. The elbows of the jacket are super articulated, which causes it to balloon a little bit when you have your arm straight, but it's super comfortable because it's wider also. But with my J1s, I used to have, if I layered up too much beneath it, the bending of the arms would get a little bit tight, but in this with this jacket I can as I showed in the earlier footage I can wear an insulator with the J6 like two insulators over each other beneath this and it's just fine so you can really layer up very thick under this and that's also something that I love a lot and why I wanted to get this because I wanted a roomier jacket and then last but not least, something that is just very cool, I think, uh, from a design perspective. Something that I only noticed like after looking at the jacket for a while because it's black, so you don't really see it. And most people probably won't see it or even care about it. But the entire back and shoulders and chest are one big panel. So I hope that's clear. So like, like the chest and the shoulders and the entire back, uh, it goes all around. It's one big Gore-Tex panel, which I think is very difficult to design. But that also means there are almost no seams at the top. So no like shoulder seams or anything or in the back, making it less prone to leaking or seams getting loose. As we saw with the Sakai jackets, like I've seen with some old jackets that I had, I have a very old Arc'teryx field, like more than 10 years old and the, the seams in the neck just got loose. I have to fix that. Okay, so this obviously still has seams 
in the neck because the collar is made of separate panels, but like there are a lot less seams because as you can see, there is just, it's just one big panel. So that's, uh, I think that's very cool and something that maybe you hadn't noticed yet. So I do believe that is the original design though of the J28, like the earlier versions of J28 were all already that design. But yeah, I think that's great. That also makes it very comfortable and makes it drape very differently on your shoulders than a jacket that has multiple panels to make up the shoulders. All right, so here as promised is the hat uh, after it has been out of the box for a while. It has less of the weird creases in the front. So I personally think it looks a lot better now. I hope you can see it better with a white background. Um, so yeah, I, I actually think I'm gonna wear this hat like this too. So yeah, I really like it this time. So that concludes my video of the J28 and S27. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked the edit I made. It took me quite a while to make it, so uh, hope you enjoyed that. As you might have noticed, I'm trying to do a bit more videos than I used to. But yeah, you know, it takes me a lot of time to make them. So, but if you really like them and you would like to support me a bit more, then you can actually, there's like a button now that you can donate. Um, I would super appreciate it. Uh, as I said, I mean, I love doing this channel, but it's just very time consuming. And, um, you know, I need to eat too. So I'm little by little, starting to earn a little bit of uh, money through the ads on YouTube. But the more that I can generate with this, the more time I can put into it and the better my videos will get. So if that is something you would like, then please support me. And of course, like and subscribe if you hadn't already yet. And I will see you in the next one.